So let's talk about installing and configuring Active Directory Federation services. Now, Active Directory Federation services is used for authenticating users across to different systems or different platforms. So for example, at YVC, we use Canvas. And when you go to Canvas, you go to uh, yvcc.instructure.edu, which is their Canvas site and it's hosted on their servers. But you'll log in using the username and password that you use when you log into services at YVC. And what happens is we use Active Directory Federation services on their application, which then communicates using an ADFS server to one of our ADFS servers. And our Active Directory servers will authenticate your user account and give you rights to access their Canvas system. That's an example of using Active Directory Federation services. All right, now, in order to really install Federation services, really test it, you need claims aware web applications, you need multiple servers. Honestly, it would take about four servers to actually do a full demonstration of it. Um, so we're not going to do that, but we are going to give you an idea of how to install Active Directory Federation services. Now, you can install it on a domain controller, but best practices is don't. So I've taken my second server and I've joined it back to my domain. And I have uh, set up or set it up as a domain member server, but it's not a domain controller. The other thing that I've done is I've created a self-signed certificate for this machine. Now, in a real life environment, you would not use a self-signed certificate. You need a publicly trusted uh, certificate. But since we're just doing a demonstration, we can use a self-signed certificate. So I. Get that certificate, get it installed on your system, make it a domain member server. You're going to have to set up DNS, get everything joined in exactly the way you want it to be before you install Federation services. So when we install Federation services, we add roles and features the way we normally do. Uh, standard installation, and I'm going to choose Active Directory Federation Services. Now, the installation itself is really straightforward. There's not much to it. But like most things with Active Directory, once we complete the installation, then we're going to have to go through and do some post-installation configuration, and that's where the fun begins. So I'm just going to let this run and complete its installation. I'm going to pause the video, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to pick it up once we get to the post-installation configuration. Okay, so ADFS has finished installing. Let me make that go away. Uh, Active Directory Federation Services has finished installing. And so we're going to click close and we're going to come to our little notification area and we're going to see that we need to configure the Federation service on this server. Now remember, this is going to have to be accessible from whatever device is making claims against your server or if you're the one making claims, it needs to be able to access, uh, access that remote uh, server. So it has to be web accessible either way. All right, so here's our uh, welcome page. We're going to create the first Federation server in a Federation server farm. Now, you can't have more than one. You can see that here, add another Federation server. But you can really only have one Federation server per domain. So since this is the first one, we're going to leave that alone. We are going to connect to Active Directory. So I'm going to use my administrator account provided I can remember my password. There we go, use my administrator account to connect to uh, ADDS. And remember, it can be on the same server, probably shouldn't be. Now, here we're gonna set our SSL certificate. If you haven't configured one already, you can use the import as long as you have that certificate file from a publicly trusted certification authority, you can import that file here. If you've already imported that file, you can click your drop down and choose your SSL certificate. Now I just use a self-signed one, so we're good to go here. And set a Federation Service Display, and I'm just gonna use my domain name. Now the next step is to set our service account. So if we've created a group managed service account, we can use it here, or we can just create a group managed service account, which makes life much easier. And I'm gonna do ADFS as my service account. Then we're gonna specify our database. Now, 
if you are using an SQL Server database, your database server has to be up and running, and whatever account you just set up on this previous page as your service account needs the rights to be able to add to that SQL database. Um, if you're not going to use an SQL database, then you can just use a Windows internal database without having to set up an SQL Server. So we'll click Next on that. We review our options as soon as they become available. Also notice that if you're going to do this on a regular basis, these settings can be exported to a Windows PowerShell script. So let's say we're going to set up four of these servers to help with load balancing. You could uh, export that script and use it to simplify this process on uh, the other devices. And then we're going to run our prerequisites check. Once our prerequisites check is completed, then we are going to run our configuration. Now, this is going to throw a couple of warnings so we don't care about. Um, this is going to run our, uh, our post installation configuration. And when it's done, ADFS will be up. Now, it won't actually do anything until you can configure it with whichever remote uh, service or provider you're connecting to. And that's going to vary a lot based on who you're connecting to and what type of configuration you're using. And it's not really something we can demonstrate easily because there's no single way that it's configured. It depends on which service you're using, um, on how your remote partner is configured, on how you want to exchange data with your remote partner. And so this is something where one site isn't going to configure it both sides are going to have to communicate in order to get this established correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and let this finish and we're going to pause it while this finishes its configuration. Okay, so that took several minutes to complete, but it comes up with this. It gives us a few warnings that we may want to be aware of, although since we're doing this in a demo environment, we wouldn't really pay too much attention to it. Uh, but if you were doing this in a live environment, you'd probably want to look through these and see if there was anything that you needed to manually go in and fix. But that's going to depend a lot on your configuration environment. Now, notice down here, the next steps required for completing your Federation Services deployment. We're going to go ahead and click Close here. And we're going to go to Tools and ADFS Management. And this is where we're going to manage ADFS. Now, again, I need multiple servers to really demonstrate this and claims aware applications and all kinds of fun things. So um, the way you configure it is going to depend so much on who you're trying to connect with and what you're trying to accomplish and who's going to be the resource partner and who's going to be the account partner and what kind of claims we're going to be using. So there's going to be a lot of different things here. So rather than trying to take you through it, let me just show you a couple of things here. So we have our service information, including claims, descriptions, device registrations, endpoints. We have access control policies, which are going to have to do with who we're permitting, who we're not permitting. Two of the big things that we're going to deal with here are relying party trusts and claims provider trusts. So what will happen is one side of one of your organizations will set a relying party trust and the other side will set a claims provider trust. And then once you have the trust in place, then you can set policies and uh, other configurations. Now, that's going to depend on who you're trying to connect to and how. So I'm not going to take you through that. I just wanted you to see this is where these are. You can view your existing trust relationships and you can create new trust relationships from here at a relying party trust, at a claims provider trust. But um, when you go to do that, you're going to do that in cooperation with the uh, other party. Now, not always, but almost always, when we're doing ADFS, Active Directory Federation Services, we are doing it between two organizations that are partnering in something like the example we used, uh, Canvas and Structure hosting our Canvas site. So we're partnering with Canvas, but other than that, our organizations have no relationship with each other. You can theoretically do ADFS between two different forests that you control both of. Even then, you're going to have to work with software developers because they're the ones who are normally creating the website that's going to require the claim, they're creating the claims aware application. 
Okay, so that gives you an idea of how we install and do our initial configuration uh, of ADFS. So just remember, once you get to that part, it's time to engage whoever you're working with and see what kind of configurations they want because you're going to need to match what they're doing and they're going to need to match what you're doing in order to get Active Directory Federation services to work. But the reason we do it is so that one side can manage the accounts, the other side can manage the applications, just like Canvas. Canvas doesn't want to, or Instructure doesn't want to create can Canvas accounts for every user at YVC. That's fine. We don't want to maintain the application. That's fine. So they maintain the resource, we maintain the accounts, and we get them to work together using Active Directory Federation services.